Hello, friends. I am Finish Lili. I am a chemical engineer. I am working in field of piping for last 30 years. This video is part of my chemical process piping channel on YouTube. This video is about pipe siding. Pipe siding, side or diameter of pipe plays important role in pumping costs. Selection of line size is important. Various formulae are available for sizing. Over or under sizing of pipelines may even become a bottleneck for plant operations. For slurry applications, a larger size pipeline not only increases the plant cost but also creates operational problems. Likewise, the smaller pipe size may consume more energy for fluid movement. One should bear in mind that the larger pipeline size than necessary increases plant cost due to pipelines along with the connected valves, fittings, supporting structures, etc. For size calculation, required flow rate F in cubic meter per second between two ends of pipeline is first calculated. Cross-sectional area with inside diameter of pipeline is then calculated. Flow rate divided by velocity as explained in that slide gives area in square meters. Looking in pipe size standards, nearest commercially available pipeline size is selected for application. Velocity of fluids in pipeline is as follows. Pump suction line to 4 feet per second or 0.6 to 1.2 meter per second. Pump return line. For to 13 feet per second or 1.5 to 4 meter per second. Pump discharge line. 7 to 8 feet per second or 2 to 5.5 meter per second. Cost consideration. Pipelines are sized after optimizing between costs of material versus operating cost incurred due to line pressure drop. For higher pipeline diameter, higher initial investment. For lower pipeline diameter, higher pressure drop and thus more operating cost. Liquid flow under gravity. Liquid flows under gravity due to the elevation difference between the start point always at higher elevation, and the end point at lower elevation, that is different in potential energy. The elevation difference mainly governs the pipeline sizing. Additional effects are due to pressure conditions for start or end point matter in pipeline sizing. If the available elevation difference is higher, a high liquid velocity that is with high allowable pressure drop can be considered for pipeline sizing. Thus, the lower pipeline size can be selected for such a condition. In case the end point is connected to a pressurized system, for example distillation column, the equivalent pressure shall be deducted from the available elevation difference and the effective available differential pressure is reduced. Thus even with the higher available elevation difference for the end point of the pipeline connected to the pressurized system, the pipeline size will be of the lower size. Similarly, if the start point of the pipeline is under vacuum, that is in barometric condensers, pipelines of high diameters are selected to reduce pipeline friction losses and thus increase the available differential pressure. Such applications are worked based on the available pressure drop. These cannot be sized only as per the economic pipeline size guidelines only. That is optimizing material cost versus operating cost. Hot liquid flow. Various problems are commonly observed in a process plants handling hot boiling liquids. These are mainly due to vaporization of flowing hot liquid, the phase change of liquid to vapor inside the pipeline or equipment. This phenomenon is also called the flashing of liquid. A typical example is centrifugal pump cavitation, which is due to low available NPSH or net positive suction head. 
The higher pipeline size is preferred to lower down pressure drop and thus to achieve higher available NPSH at pump suction port. Similarly in other pipelines, the pressure drop due to sudden change in the flow direction or the reduction of the line size, hot liquid vaporization takes place which generates vapor bubbles inside the pipeline. Due to this more space is occupied by the mixture of generated vapors and flowing liquid and subsequently fluid flow is obstructed. Similar type of phenomena are observed in case of liquids carrying dissolved gases which expand at higher temperatures. For these types of applications normally higher pipeline sizes are recommended. By half line for equipment or instrument Equipment or instruments, especially which create a high pressure drop and are provided with a bypass line to have the facility for maintaining process continuity even during maintenance work. For plate heat exchangers, control valves, etc. are provided with a bypass arrangement which normally has two isolation valves in line of the unit and a flow regulation valve in parallel to this unit. The normal operations as fluid passes through the main units, either the plate heat exchanger or control valve, it exerts an additional pressure drop. Accordingly, the supply pressure for the fluid stream is estimated, which the connecting unit like the centrifugal pump creates. The centrifugal pump is selected based on this created pressure drop by the unit. During bypassing of the connected unit, this additional pressure is eliminated. While running pump discharges the high flow rate as per the typical pump characteristics. To avoid this situation, it is always recommended to use a lower size bypass line with a regulation valve to create pressure equivalent to the main connecting unit. Sample line. Normally, a small fluid quantity is collected for analysis to determine its composition. It is applicable for any stage of processing like for raw material, intermediate product, finished product or it may be even utility or affluent. Even for small quantities of sample collection, line size mainly depends upon the type of fluid being handled and the location of the sample point in the process. Even for clear liquids, the sample line size depends upon its location like at the atmospheric tank, pump suction or discharge etc. Though it is very difficult to define proper guidelines for sample line sizing, the following points should be kept in mind while sizing characteristics of sample fluid. Less fluid losses. Safety during sample withdrawal. Ease of operation. Location of sample point, etc. Cooling water circulation. Higher velocities are preferred for cooling water circulation pipelines. This is mainly due to the following two reasons. Cooling water in a cooling shower is exposed to sunlight that helps in the development of algae formation. This generated algae material goes to the circulating cooling water. At a lower liquid velocity in the pipeline, algae starts growing within the pipeline and after some time, they start blocking cooling water circulation or it passes to the connected heat exchanger unit. Thus, the higher liquid velocity, for example, 1.8 to 2.5 meter per second, for circulation line is recommended to avoid algae development within the pipeline. Normally, higher cooling water circulation flow rates are encountered in the chemical process industries that require large size pipelines with longer lengths to cover various heat exchanging units. Thus, to reduce the cost of pipe material even with high power consumption due to increased pressure drop will be an appropriate choice. Tank overflow. Overflow lines in the tanks are provided for the following reasons. To avoid liquid losses that is overflowed, liquid is recovered in another tank to avoid unwanted spillage of liquid around plant building, to maintain liquid levels in the overhead tanks. Thanks for learning. If you like this video, please give a like to my channel and subscribe it.